Hello and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to prepare clear parts, canopies, things like that, for use in your models. So the first thing to do is obviously get your clear parts. Um, <clears throat> I've been working on my Mustang ever since I opened the kit. I've been protecting my clear parts, so <clears throat> I've had the clear sprue wrapped inside a tissue, nice clean tissue, and then I chucked it inside the bag, and that was just to keep it safe and protected in the box while I was, you know, moving around all the other sprues, so you don't get any nasty scratches or grazes on it. So, I'm going to unattach, unattach, remove, disattach, whatever. I'm going to take them off the sprue, and then we'll start our work. Here we are, two pieces of canopy off the sprue. Um, obviously we've got some pretty big cleanup to do here, here, and here. Um, I find that clear plastic can be quite brittle, so just be really, really careful. Ideally, get a really sharp scalpel, slice away, and then just do some fine sanding, but just be careful, it tends to be brittle. So, all cleaned up. This piece, no major dramas. The tabs were on the bottoms of it, so it was you know, fairly fine. Um, one other thing, when you're handling them, try and keep your greasy fingers off them because you know, it all contributes. This piece, due to some stupid engineering by Hasegawa, um, it actually had the tab on the side there. So even with some very delicate sanding with like 2000 grit paper, it's still got this manky bit here. I'll take a photo in a second to show you. That's where our next piece comes in handy. So I'll take a photo, show you what we're dealing with, and then we'll move on. Right, so our next step, clean it all with a clean tissue, fresh, soft tissue. Get all the oil from your fingers off it, any dust from the sanding, anything like that. You'll see there's still some perfections, some little scratches, you know, they're just unavoidable, but that's what our next step will fix. Um, so, the magic ingredient here is, yeah, it's looking about as good as we're going to get, so you can still see there's little imperfections there. I hope the camera can pick those up. You can see them in front of my finger there. Um, our next magic ingredient is this stuff. So here in Australia it's called Pledge One Go, I think it's actually got some other names. In America it's called Future, also called Pledge. It's basically floor polish. Um, I've had this bottle for about five years and it's still completely you know, two-thirds full. So just pour it into a cup and what we're going to do is dip our pieces into it. Now this stuff actually goes a bit yellowish over time. So you can see there, five years ago this was perfectly clear. Um, some people worry about it getting yellowy or cloudy on their canopies of their models. It's never done it to me. Um, yeah, it looks a bit crap there, but we'll dip these little guys in. Got some toilet paper to drop them onto here. Only the best in my household. And um, yeah, we'll just see what we can do. So try and find a spot where it's not going to matter too much if you don't have perfectly clear. So those tweezers will hold that there, bang, that's all you got to do. Drip off the excess and then leave that for 24 hours to dry completely. Same with this bad boy, bang, there you go, done. Couldn't have done that better if I tried. Um, Yeah, again, drip off the excess. You don't want to leave great big globs of this stuff. You don't want it to be drenched in it, because while it's drying, it will um, settle down and you'll get like run marks or globs of it down the bottom there. Little bollocks. If that happens, just re-dip it in while it's wet. Drip, 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 drip. Try and get as much of the drips off as you can. And then back down. So. I'm going to leave that for 24 hours. This stuff, I'm going to pour it back into the bottle and we'll be back in a tick. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are, 24 hours later. And as you can see, there's just a beautiful shine to these. So those sort of slightly manky bits that were there, all gone, all the visible imperfections are gone. Yeah, we're in a good place. Ooh, same with this one. So now that you've done this, just be careful. And also, obviously, try and store it in a nice dust-free place overnight. You don't want little bits of dust falling onto your surface. But yeah, you can see there, really beautiful, blemish-free, in a good place. Now, the one thing that is bothering me is this little mark just here, which is where it was attached to the sprue. So, uh, try not to put your fingers all over it. So you can still see it just there. Um, you, know, you could maybe live with it, but it's going to piss me off the entire time. So I've done a little bit of testing. I've got some 2000 grit sandpaper, and I've done a little bit of testing on the sprue that the thing came from, just to see how badly that will grind it up, and it seems to be okay. So I'm going to get to work on that little bugger there, and then do another coat of future. I was planning to do another coat of future anyway, because I've had people tell me that two coats, oh my god, it just makes it amazing, and I wanted to try it. I reckon if you did one coat, you'd be fine. Um, that's what I've always done in the past, and I've always been happy. But with this one, I wanted to try it anyway, and I want to get rid of that little bugger. So I'm going to sand it away now, and do some more. I'll show you in a tick. Precisely the same as last night. Pour some pledge, future, whatever you want to call it, in there. Then dip these little bad guys in. So, take it off my drying paper. Chuck it in. Make sure it's covered. Get most of it off. In case you don't want it dripping. And then dry it somewhere nice and dust free overnight. On this piece here, um, look I've done the best I can, it's still a little bit visible down there but it's not going to get any better, it's actually like an imperfection in the mould, it goes all the way through. So it's as smooth as I can make the edge, but yeah, not much I can do. Hopefully this second dipping will help it out just to get rid of that effect. Splush, 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 you get the deal. Um, the beautiful thing about this stuff too is it protects your plastic from any kind of reaction with your glue when you stick it on. So when you super glue this onto your model, the future stops it from clouding up, fogging up. Bang, done. Leave that for 24 hours. Pour this lot back into my bottle to use again. And Bob's your uncle. Here is the end result after the second day has dried. So it's 24 hours later. As you can see, it's really beautiful. Um, yeah, there's not a hint of yellow about it. It's just perfect, you know. All that nastiness around there, it's as good as it's getting. I think we can get away with that. Um, beautiful and shiny. I'll just zoom in a bit closer there for you. So yeah, um, if you can't find a product that's called Future or Pledge, um, basically yeah, in some countries I think it's also called Johnson's Clear, not quite sure, but basically any kind of like durable high gloss floor finish that comes in a bottle. You want it to be clear and you want it to be a little bit sort of thin oil consistency. Um, so if you do find something like that, you know, try it out on a bit of spare sprue first to make sure it works, but you can't go far wrong. Um, so points to note, if you bugger it up, you can always clear it off with Windex or any kind of ammonia-based window cleaner, um, or you can use isopropyl alcohol, so that kind of cleaning, rubbing alcohol. Um, comes off easy peasy. Uh, last thing to note, I'd probably leave it another two days or so before I mask it. You just don't want to you know, tempt fate and get too stuck in too early with sticking sticky tape onto it. Give it plenty of time to cure. So look, I hope that's helped you. From here on, yeah, your, your 
pledge, your future will save you. So when you when I attach this to the Mustang, a little bit of CA glue, it's not going to fog up like it would have done otherwise, and it really has saved all those nasty, crappy bits that were sort of here, the nastiest around here, a couple of scratches here and there. It's just made a world of difference. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please chime in below. Some people say, yeah, don't bother with it, or it looks unrealistic. Yeah, it's totally up to your call. But for me, it massively improves clear pieces, and it just makes them look beautiful. And you know, once that's masked up, yeah, it's gorgeous. So, chat to you next time. Chime in below with comments. Subscribe if you can. If you think my work is good, I'd love to have you on board. And chat to you next time. See you guys. Bye. Hey, P.S., one last thing. Someone is going to chime in and say, oh, how can you use such yellow future? That's crazy. It's going to yellow on your canopies. This is a Russian fighter I made about five years ago. With This is the exact same batch. There is no yellowing. This is a Fock Wolf. Let me get some light on the subject. And yeah, it's dusty as hell, but there's no yellowing. So that's the same batch. Stuff in the bottle has gone yellow. Let's get in focus there. So yeah, you can see it's dusty, but you know, there is no yellowing there. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that to me is not an issue. Don't be put off by it. Get stuck in. Enjoy. Alright, I promise. That's it this time. See ya.